Hi everyone, uh, this is Manish and after procrastinating for months, I finally decided that uh, I'm going to make a video. Um, recently, I started learning about AWS services and especially AWS Lambda and I decided to make a video out, out of it so that in future, whenever I need to revisit this topic, I can simply watch my uh, videos and you know learn from my own explanation. I think that's always uh, much faster. And also all of the contents will be in a single place, so I don't have to go on, you know, look in, you know, search in different websites. Uh, and because I would be the one who would be explaining things, it would be much easier for myself to learn from that. And if in doing so, it can help others as well to, to learn about Lambda, how to get started, then I think it's a win-win for me. And so, yeah, with that, uh, let's start this video. So in this video, I'll talk about the basics. Um, basically, this is introduction to Lambda, how you, what Lambda is and how you can get started with this. We'll also have a hands-on uh, session where I will show you how you can create Lambda from scratch, how you can run your code. And yeah, I think that would be the things that I would like to uh, do in this video. Okay, so let's start with the basics, so what cloud computing is. So before going into Lambda, just a basic revision of what cloud computing is. So um, in a, let's say in a traditional sense, when uh, you need to deploy something, you need to have uh, your own uh, infrastructure, you need to buy hard disk, uh, CPUs, RAMs, and so on. You need, you need to have your own you know, IT team where they would be responsible for maintaining your infrastructure. And that was very hassle. Whenever you need to scale up or scale down, it was very costly. So, you know, this gave rise to this uh, cloud computing where you don't have to buy anything. Basically, you can get all those resources over the internet and you only pay for uh, the resource that you are using and for how long you are using it. And there are a lot of uh, cloud providers out there. Uh, Amazon Web Service, uh, Azure, Google, and so on. And Amazon is the most popular one. So yeah, let's look into AWS. Base, uh, just a simple introduction of what AWS is. Basically, it's uh, Amazon Web Service, and it has over 200 featured services and data centers globally, so that you don't have to you know, worry about uh, your data laws. So, in some places, there are laws that you know you cannot have uh, the data outside the country border. So AWS has these uh, data centers throughout the globe, so that you don't have to worry about those. And also, uh, it helps AWS, especially. I think this is very advantageous for startups, as where as you can simply you know reduce your cost whenever you need to you know. Uh, deploy any of your services you don't have to go on buy resources you can simply use them and pay for what you have used so it's more you know cost efficient it's more agile and it's very faster okay uh, so finally what aws lambda is so it is one of the services that is provided by the aws it's an event driven and serverless computing so event driven meaning you need to have some event and based on your event, Lambda will execute your code. And also the term serverless is mentioned here. So initially when I heard about this term serverless, I was not able to wrap my head around it. Uh, I mean, I could not think how can something run without a server. So yeah, so finally when I learned about this, uh, researched about this, then I actually understood why the name was serverless. So it's uh, the, the term serverless is actually for us users or the client of the AWS, meaning we are not responsible for handling the servers. AWS will handle it for, for us. And that's why they termed it as uh, serverless. So I, um, I mean, finally I got you know their marketing perspective as to how you can market some product. So yeah, I, I mean, this is very innovative and uh, basically, this is a computing service where, you know, if you need to do some sort of computation, some processing, you use this service and it automatically manages all the computing resources that are required for your code. So all the RAM, all the CPUs, everything else is handled by AWS Lambda. If, uh, if it needs to scale up, 
it does it automatically if it needs to scale down it does it automatically you don't have to worry about anything and it was introduced in 2014 uh, it's been a long time since then okay so let's look into why uh, would you want to use AWS Lambda just the first thing is you can run your code without thinking about servers so I think that that's very advantageous when you are looking to you know build up your products very quickly I think this is the ideal scenario where you'd like to use AWS Lambda you simply uh, uh, focus on writing the business logic the core of you know of uh, your feature and don't have to worry about servers at all and not having to worry about servers is uh, I think uh, the greatest point uh, the, um, because you are not the one who is responsible for servers, uh, all the provisioning or managing the infrastructure is also handled by the AWS. And I think uh, provisioning of, of resource is one of the biggest challenges because you, I mean, there are you know uh, lots of complications to it. The first thing is you cannot under provision because you know. Yeah, it might affect your application. You cannot over provision because it can cost you more. So this was always hassle. And whenever you need to scale up or scale down your infrastructure, uh, it would be you know a mess because you need to now buy new resources, uh, replace the existing ones, and so on. So AWS Lambda uh, helps you save all of these costs by you know uh, by having you to pay for only the resource that you are using and for how much you are using it so for example if your application uh, you know has hundreds of requests per day and let's say a request in average takes three or four seconds then you only have to pay for that much seconds of your time you don't have to pay for you know this okay so you don't have to pay for you know whole 24 hours a day so for example if you are using ec2 instance you know that you need to keep your instance run, running 24 hours a day because you don't want uh, your users you know uh, to have problems when they are using your application but with lambda what happens is when a request uh, is received then only the lambda executes your code rest of the time it is idle it is not using any resource um, you are not basically paying for any of the idle time so you know you can imagine uh, scenarios where your application is not used throughout the day you know that your application is uh, used uh, heavily during the day and uh, very lightly in the night or, or the vice versa AWS Lambda would be the best scenario to use it because you won't have, because you won't have to pay for you know uh, for the whole day or for the whole night because you only pay for uh, how much you are using it and also for I think uh, this is uh, this uh, and also uh, one more advantage of using AWS Lambda for especially for startups is that you know AWS Lambda gives you 1 million requests free per month in the AWS free tire and I think that's a lot to just get started for any startup to understand how their application is working how users are you know uh, communicating with their application what uh, how they're enjoying the features for you know basically to get the ins and outs of your product without having to you know invest uh, any money in it so i think that's a very good point and yeah i think that would sum it up for the basic introduction of aws lambda and with that i will start the hands-on session so I will show you how you can actually create your Lambda. So first we need to log into AWS console. Uh, so I have already logged in. Uh, what I'm going to do is, okay, let's go to the AWS console. And uh, the Lambda, because this is a compute uh, resource, what you can go do is, you can go in the services, click on compute, and then look for this Lambda. or uh, you can simply uh, search for it and here you go so this is the lambda so uh, as i said earlier lambda allows you to run your code without, without having to you know uh, think about servers so basically you will have your uh, codes and you need to you know uh, keep them somewhere so lambda has these uh, functions where you basically keep your code or basically lambda functions are the codes 
that is eventually executed by the lambda. So, what you can do is you can create a lambda function or basically a function and this is where you will uh, keep all your codes or your business logic. So, let us name it my lambda and you can also choose the runtime environment. So, it supports a lot of different uh, runtime environments. I will start with Python. And I think that's it for the basic uh, lambda. You, you don't need to look about permissions, uh, execution role, advanced settings, and so on. Uh, I'll try to cover them in a different video. So for now, we just need a name and the runtime environment. Okay. So with uh, the name and the runtime, you can now create your very first lambda function. So it should not take much. Yeah. So yeah, uh, you have the name of the lambda function and the runtime environment. Yeah, and now uh, AWS is creating a very first lambda function. And once it is created, you can see in the code section uh, the piece of code that this lambda is going to execute. So we'll just change uh, this text for now. Uh, let's make it hello world, the cliche, and we'll deploy it. And because this lambda is a event driven to uh, you know to invoke this method or invoke this code or execute this code you basically need to create an event and once that uh, event takes place then this code will be executed so what we want to do is we want to create an event so you can click on test uh, name this let's say test event one uh, or let's say simply test event and you can save it so now we have a test event and we have our lambda function where we have the code that we want to execute and with that we'll click on test so what this will do is uh, this will trigger the event in which in return will invoke our lambda function and since as you can see in the response we got the status code 200 and body hello world from lambda so yeah this is how you can create your very first lambda function and uh, you can also see here in the function logs uh, there is this section of duration 1.32 seconds there is also this section of init duration that is 111 milliseconds and finally we have this build duration so as you can see that um, lambda or basically aws will only charge you for two milliseconds so if your request takes 10 seconds then you'll be only billed for that 10 milliseconds and rest of the time you don't have to pay anything so what i will do is uh, just to give uh, just to show you how long okay so what i will do is uh, i'll so i'll modify this method uh, what i'm going to do is uh, let's create a nested loop so that this method takes a lot of time to execute uh, let's give a number 100 we'll create a for loop uh, we'll let's create another for loop uh, and the f and the third one as well let's do some sort of computation inside it j into Okay. okay so now what we are doing is uh, we updated this uh, function called lambda handler and we have added a piece of code which is going to take a lot of time so okay uh, once we do that make sure you always uh, deploy your changes before you test it because uh, without deploying it the lambda will execute uh, the previous version of that code so let's add something here for example uh, long running uh, let's say method completed so let's say i'm going to uh, test this lambda without without deploying it let's do that first so as you can see uh, the body it is uh, we can see only the hello world from the lambda and not the new changes that we added so what you want to do is once you have made your changes you you always want to deploy it so once it is deployed and now if we invoke this lambda uh, what we can see is in the function logs we have this new message called 
long running method completed and as you can see the it took about uh, one second uh, that is uh, 1100 millisecond and our build duration is 1147 so let's say for some reason if it takes more than that I'll make it 150 deploy it and test it okay so now we have uh, uh, the duration is about three seconds so as you can see you only pay for the duration of the time it takes for your request to complete okay and uh, since we are already in this and as you can see there is uh, this error message here what it says is that task timed out after three seconds so what happens with lambda is the the default execution time limit is about three seconds so if you have a piece of code which can take more than three seconds what you want to do is you can configure your lambda click on configuration and in the general configuration we have this timeout parameter we can edit it let's make it to five minutes or let's say three four four minutes for now so what this will do is this will uh, make your uh, lambda's execution timeout for four minutes and three seconds. So, okay, uh, once you have this, and now let's click on test. So yeah, this time our method was actually uh, executed, and it took about. Uh, 3.9 seconds so let's make it let's increase the number to 200 and deploy it and from the test let's say invoke the lambda and it should take about let's say I'm not sure how long but it will take more than four seconds yeah so it took about nine seconds so this time our lambda was not uh, you know timed out and yeah so this is how you can increase your uh, timeout of your lambda and one more thing and that i want to uh, inform is that so if you scroll down in the code source section what you can see here is the runtime settings and here is this uh, parameter called handler and this is actually the name of the method that lambda is going to you know uh, execute so when you are uh, adding your code here make sure this method name uh, actually matches this one so if i were to change this for example let's say i will call my handler function as let's say main or something like that i'll save it so what uh, the, okay so uh, what this will do is it will now uh, inform lambda that the method that we want to execute is called main but in our code we don't have a method whose name is main so if i were to dip, uh, run this lambda you can see that we get error and it says that main missing on module lambda function so what you want to do is you want to make sure that your uh, entry method or invocation method is same as the one in your settings so we'll name it main we'll deploy it and we will uh, before testing it i will change this value to a smaller number so that it does not take much time deploy it and test it so yeah now uh, it was executed so this is how you can create a lambda how you can change the uh, default timeout how you can change your lambda handler function name and i think yeah i think this would be enough for the uh, introduction to uh, lambda video I'll try to go in detail more in a separate video where I will show you how you can uh, run your function which has different dependencies and how you can also zip your uh, code from your local and simply upload it here instead of writing it here in this uh, text pad or whatever it is. So yeah, with that, uh, I think this will be the end of this video. And if you guys have any feedbacks, uh, you think any uh, concept that I explained is wrong please feel free to comment it in the comment section <laughs> and yeah I'll try to improve it in my next video so yeah thank you guys have a good day